Hi Mike. Hello. Have you heard of Game Pass? Yes. Yeah, it's this thing where Xbox, you give them some money, mm. and then they upend a big garbage bag full of games onto your floor, right. and you have to sort of sift through them and figure out which ones are good. That sounds both good and bad. Do you have a solution for the bad bit of it? Yes. How about instead, we just tell you what games that we're enjoying. It can be a real time saver, because maybe you'll enjoy them too. Uh, so we're going to start a new monthly video where we talk about what's coming to Game Pass mm. this month that is good and worth looking out for and downloading. Uh, but because it's April already, we're also going to start with a few recommendations from this year that you might want to check out. So, let's go. Originally hitting Game Pass on January the 18th this year, Nobody Saves the World from Guacamelee developers Drinkbox is an action RPG in which you play as the titular Nobody who is able to use a magic wand to transform into countless other forms, including rats, robots, and dragons. So have you seen Nobody Saves the World? Have you seen anything about this game? I have seen, yeah, I've seen a bit of footage from it. It looks fun. It's a sort of like top-down action RPG. You're sort mm. of matching the form that you assume to the challenge in front of you or the battle in front of you, which is kind of an interesting mechanic and there's lots of them. It's like 14 or something. Yeah, so there's a, yeah, there's a bunch of different puzzles that you come across. They can only be sort of solved by the different forms. But the interesting thing is that you can also take abilities from any of the forms once you've unlocked them. Right. So, like not the sort of the, sh the shape and stuff, but um, some of their combat abilities and things like that. So, Mix and match. Yeah, so if you particularly like one of the rangers' combat abilities, you can put that in a rat. So um, yeah, it's very cool, very um, approachable, and it's got that kind of Hades-style dungeon crawling mm. feel that I really enjoy. The art um, style's cool as well. It's the like art really style's cool. Beautiful. Plus, bonus, it's co-op as well. Amazing. Um, and you, you and your friends can have like complementary forms. So. For example, one of you can be a character that can poison people, the other can be a character who can has an ability that detonates all the poisoned characters on screen at once. So one nice. of you runs around poisoning everyone and then the other just detonates everyone at once. Sounds good. So Those yeah. combo attacks. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely worth checking out. That came out in uh, January, January, I believe, on Game Pass. So yeah, Get if you it fancy, downloaded. fancy a dungeon crawler, check that one out. Another January addition to Game Pass was the complete Hitman trilogy, in which you take on the role of Agent 47 and are given free reign to assassinate your targets across various sandboxy exotic locales, using methods as diverse as poison, exploding rubber ducts, and wine-making equipment. So obviously we're big fans of Hitman here on the channel. You what might else, have noticed. What else is there to say? I mean, the fact that you get all three Hitman... It's, that's wild, isn't it? Yeah, that's what, 18 levels? Something, something like, like that, yeah. Something like that. You know, spanning from Paris to Marrakesh to... Thailand. So many classics. Yeah. It's like a big holiday that you download and then you can be in. Yeah. All right, you do have to murder someone while you're there, but you know, not all holidays are perfect. Also, just... he's bad. He's a bad person as well. Yeah, he's a bad person as well. So maybe just knock a star off the trip advisor um, rating yeah. and, and, you know, and enjoy the rest of it. If, big, big... if you haven't checked out Hitman yet, this is, a, you should, mm -hmm. and this is a good time to do it because you can download it on Game Pass. Each level is like a intricately designed little clockwork dollhouse that you can just go in and learn all the routines and fiddle with stuff. I don't think people talk enough about the sense of humour in these games. Yeah, it's very Like, it's good. very silly. Uh, it allows you to go around dressed as a clown. <laughs> That's my favourite way to spend the time. Um, yeah, you should be playing Hitman. If you aren't already, now is a really good time to check it out. Plus, they, they support it really well with the elusive targets and like the timed events, and they're, they're going to be adding content updates to it as well that you'll get as part of your Game Pass thing, so check it out. Mm, probably one of the best games of the last decade, I probably. think it's fair to say. Hitting Game Pass on January the 20th, Windjammers 2 is the sequel to the beloved 1994 Neo Geo original about outlandish characters playing Frisbee. With 10 different courts, special moves, and cross-platform online multiplayer, this is, hands down, the best Frisbee game to come out this year. Also, Tough competition in that. Also one of the area. best games in general. Say, why, why, is that, why is that? You're the, you're the Windjammers fan, so right. I, I played a little of it. Yeah, I made a video about it and no one watched it, so you, you'll listen to me now though, right? It's really good. You know how like Pong is like considered the, the sort of original like archetypal video game, right? The original Windjammers. It's a it. bit, yeah, it's a bit like it's a bit like Pong. It's got that level of simplicity, but with uh, a degree of skill to it, and uh, it plays out a bit like a fighting game, really. That sort of one v one, very fast, reactive sort of uh, gameplay, and um, yeah, it's just a it's just a big old vibe, and, and it takes you know roughly five minutes to get into, and then a, a further half an hour to master, and then you're just having great, amazing mm. like Jedi speed. Uh, frisbee battles with your friends, and Sounds it's great good. multiplayer. It's just, it's just one of the best multiplayer games ever made. And the sequel doesn't do much to mess with the formula. There's a few additional moves, a couple of additional characters, and things like that. But by and large, it's a, 
It's just a sort of almost like an HD remaster of the original game because you can't improve on perfection. And the first Windjammers was perfection, so this is just this is just a perfection, perfection with, to the sequel in HD. Yes, yeah. basically. Who's your favourite character? Uh, I like. I think his name's Klaus Vessel. Um, he's the big burly German, German dude. German yeah. Dude. yeah, he yeah. Um, he doesn't move very fast, but he's got a lot of power to his shots. But he can send the frisbee right through your chest. Yeah, exactly. Like now the other side, leaving just a, a, a yeah. letterbox. A death becomes a hole. Yeah, right in there. Added to Game Pass on March 16th, Tunic is an isometric adventure game that borrows heavily from the original Zelda and tells the story of a young fox out on an adventure to unravel an ancient mystery. So are you, are you aware of Tunic? I'm, I've seen like screenshots of it, but I don't know much more than that. But I've heard it's it's quite easy to spoil, so that I shouldn't I shouldn't really yeah. learn too much before I download it. Well, it's what I've moved on to is now I've finished Elden Ring. Now that you're into hard games now. Now I'm into now hard, you're game, a hard now games. Now I'm, yeah, now I'm a Souls man. That's what we call ourselves. <laughs> I'm a Souls man. Da 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 da. -da. Fair but, enough. Uh, no, Tunic is uh, it is hard to talk about without spoiling some things that are kind of genuinely pleasantly surprising when you play, so I don't want to talk too much about it other than to recommend it. It's not the sort of game that holds your hand at all. It just sort of drops you in right. the game world and it's like, off you go, explore. Learn it all. Le yeah, figure it figure it out. Like everything in, in the game is sort of written in this language that you don't understand. It's right. like symbols that you can't... Um, like Duolingo. Uh, no, <laughs> but um, okay. yeah, you sort of have to figure it, figure it out for yourself. And there's like, you find pages of the game's manual in the game for the environment. And it's a sort of huge game-spanning mystery for you to put together. And so when you finally finish the game's manual, you've also finished the game. But, I don't mm, need the manual. Well, I don't, yeah, again, I don't want to spoil it. But <laughs> okay, um, right. like just mechanically, it's it plays very much like those old Zelda games. Um, mm -hmm. You can be like, isometric, you can twi switch to top down for combat. And you're an adorable fox. Like if Link became a fox. Who doesn't want to be an adorable fox? That's a recommendation. Fox. But yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the barrier to entry is very low. It's on Game Pass. Just download it, give it a go. Give it half an hour and see how you get on. Hitting Game Pass the same day as Tunic, Paradise Killer is an open-world detective story set on an island populated by a surreal cast of suspicious characters. Your job is to search for evidence to solve a murder and try not to get too distracted by the game's gorgeous vaporwave aesthetic and glorious synth-heavy soundtrack. I feel like you would really like Paradise Killer. I've got it on Switch. I've Have played you? a bit of it. Oh, you yeah. played it. You yeah, played, played it. bits of it. Uh, it. I've not completed the the mystery, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's incredible. It's got such a weird, surreal, and unique aesthetic. I you love know, all the character names, like Lady Loves D Love Dies yes. and uh, Leon Disaster. Leon Disaster. Lunatic Pope is another. <laughs> Is another character. They're so good. They're so good. It, it, it's it's unlike anything I've ever played before. Um, but it, it, yeah, it's hugely immersive and weird. And just because it's it's so unique, it's definitely worth giving it a try. It's another game that doesn't hold your hand as well. It just sort of yeah. it lets oh, yeah. you figure stuff out, and then you can trigger the end game, which is like the trial. Yes. When you feel like you're ready, which I've is cool. I've never felt more lost than the first point I was dumped into Paradise Killer, and you're you're just in this totally alien looking environment. Well, not totally alien, because some of it looked, you know, there's like bars and buildings and docks, you know, and, docks yeah. and all this. So there's recognizable stuff, but also the world does not work in the same way that our world does. Mm. Um, but everything's just got such a cool vibe. All the dialogue's brilliantly written. Uh, all the characters are cool. There's this red skeleton guy who's great. And yeah, it, it just looks and sounds amazing. The soundtrack is incredible. I think Luke may have bought it on vinyl. That's how much he liked it. Yeah, so. and I bet that was not black coloured vinyl. I bet it had no. I think cool, it was purple it was cool or blue or something. Yeah, well. yeah. But it, it really appeals to like that Ace Attorney part of my brain. Yeah, yeah. It's a sort of game that you play with a notebook where you're like, oh, that's interesting. Note that down, and you draw it. By the end of it, you've got a big like conspiracy wall. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> linking it with the uh, points. Yeah, it. you're that always sunny meme. You just but like, I, I, I find these games stressful as well because I'm always like, oh, but what if I missed something? And but what if I make a, a bad assumption? That's the great thing though, the fact that there's not just like, you get funneled into the right answer. You mm. draw your own conclusions and then at the end you're like, I think this is what happened and I, if, you know, if I'm confident enough in that, I should be able to prove it. I'm never confident enough yeah. in that. But All right, well, it's good though. Check it is it very good. So currently there are only two games announced for Game Pass in April. That may change as April rolls on. But mm. uh, seeing as, as we're here now, let's talk about the two games sure. currently announced. Baseball! It's America's pastime, but definitely the American sport with the fewest classic video games. But if you're a fan of swatting dingers into the outfield, the good news is that MLB The Show 22 is heading to Game Pass day and date of release, April the 5th. 
So even if you're unsure about baseball games, you won't have to pay anything to find out if it's for you. Now, the big thing I know about baseball is that Shohei Otani is on the cover of this one. Right. And he's cool. Excellent. He, he is good at batting and throwing it. What? Yeah. The holy grail? He like throws it the best, but he also hits it the best. No. Normally you so, either do the throwing or you do the hitting. It's, it's a specialised sport. And yet mm. somehow this Otani character <laughs> manages to do both. <laughs> so Unbelievable. I love it. I love to see it. Um, but yeah, MLB The Show, we played a bit of this for a Christmas challenge. Yeah, you showed me how easy it was to hit home runs. Turns was... out I'm great at socking dingers. <laughs> I've just got to wait till I see yeah. the whites of its eyes. Of the baseball's eyes. And... Blammo! Oh, <laughs> come on! No! Oh, into the stands. No way! Into the safer oh. burger stand! How have you managed... Th That's not fair! Yes! This is now the only baseball game. Right. Because there was another one, but they've stopped doing it, so... Well, in the, in the face of the unbeatable competition that is MLB The Show, with its fabulous franchise mode, whatever that is. Yeah. And it's now stadium creator mode. Yeah, it's got New. a stadium creator, so that, so that, could, that could be fun. It's not even rubbish as well. It's not even a rubbish stadium creator. It's actually really good. You can probably like arrange all the walls and decide the heights and decide how easy it's to get home runs. If it's in space. You put UFOs in it. If it's on an island in the sea. Yeah, dinosaurs. Under the sea, like Rapture. You can make a stadium down there. Yeah, exactly. But if you, oh, if you socked a dinger, it might break the glass. <laughs> no, God's all like only dingers. Yeah. <laughs> only sucking dingers. Oak. Also, I read an article that said this is one of the easiest games to uh, platinum trophy or get a thousand games score. Really? So, yeah, should only take you a couple of hours. Well, you made it look easy when we played it, but I, I'm prepared to believe there is some skill involved in baseball. You need to work on your, on your dinger socking. <laughs> I need to sock, practice socking my dingers. Coming to Game Pass on April 7th, Chinatown Detective Agency is a striking looking adventure game described as a cyber noir point and click adventure. Set in 2032, you play as a private detective in future Singapore who has to not only solve mysteries and deliver justice for their clients, but also keep their business running at the same time. So this sounds kind of interesting. You've got to keep your like your employees happy and your, uh, your income flow working at the same time as investigating mysteries and crimes and stuff. It's kind of like business management plus <laughs> noir sounds, detective sounds game. Sounds stressful. It'd yeah. be great to be able to focus on one or the other. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see how it how it plays out. Um, obviously, it looks really nice. It's mm. got a beautiful like pixel art style. It's kind of giving me um, Beneath the Steel Sky kind yep. of vibes, or um, like the Blade Runner point and click game. Um, yeah, yeah. Any of those things. But I'm a you know I'm a big fan of point and click games. Of course. Uh, so I'm I'm keen to check this out. And the fact that it's on Game Pass means that I probably will. Yeah, I've not actually played it, but I've read some previews and things like that that talk about how you have to sort of use real world detective skills to solve huh. the puzzles. Like you have to Google things and find out that's interesting. stuff in, in the real world to solve puzzles in the game, which is cool. Oh, Snatcher, that's the other game that it gave me. Yeah, yeah. It gave me vibes of that yeah, kind of early old Kojima old. stuff. I think that's like one of the things that is the real promise of Game Pass is that genres like point and click, which maybe mm. struggle otherwise to find an audience and find sort of publishers and things like that, will have a better shot when you can, you know, they're part of a selection of games that you can download as part of a subscription. Yeah. So people get it so they can play Starfield. And exactly, then... but then they, they're browsing around for something to play and they might, might stumble across some genres that they haven't tried before. Also play that, exactly. So that was a quick roundup of some of the games on Game Pass that we've enjoyed this year and that are coming up in April, mm. baseball fans. <laughs> Race to your console. Run, don't walk. Uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this. In the comments below, why don't you put the Game Pass games that you like playing. Good put idea. your recommendations for other people to check out down there. And if you enjoyed this video, why not join the OX Supporters Club over on Patreon. Go to patreon.com forward slash OX Club. We'd love to have you. Bye!